Omimi, North Dakota. This could really be good. It looks like a prescription bottle, kind of wedged in. Got to be very careful here. These things are exceedingly rare. I think it's intact. This thing is intact. This is a holy grail. This is an incredible find. I'm at the ghost town of Omimi, North Dakota, standing near where the Cary Bottling Works once stood. The bottling operation was started just before World War I and didn't last long. I got permission to excavate the grounds in search of artifacts, so we'll take a walk around and see what's going on. As you can see, there's not much left of the old town. The buildings stood up there by those trees. That was Main Street. Back here, towards the back of the lot, see there's still some snow that hasn't melted. It's a low area. I pushed a probe rod through the ground. I hit a loss of compaction, some objects, possibly some stove ash. That's a good indicator. We'll get this thing opened up. Down about three feet. Hadn't hit much and all of a sudden dropped into all kinds of stuff. There's what looks to be some liquor flasks, maybe some wine bottles. The soil's changing color as you can see. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of stuff down here. This is over a hundred years old. It's a liquor flask, likely held whiskey or brandy. Looks like some kind of wine bottle. This must be English made. It's an applied crown top. You only see that with English stuff. Looks like another liquor flask. Wow, so this pit has some great age. It's a Mikado style. As you can see, it's still got the stopper in it. Now, that's unusual. That's a clear stopper. Usually the stoppers match the color of the glass, but we'll take it. Huh, some kind of applied top turn mold wine bottle. Now this pit has some good age. It's definitely pre-World War I. Huh. And another Mikado flask. See this one has a stopper that matches the glass. We're definitely on the right track. All kinds of stuff down here. Seems like most of these are alcoholic beverage containers. This one is wedged in. There's no end in sight. Huh. Okay, old style lager. You know what, that's unusual. There we go, G. Heilemans. This is kind of a wider body than I usually see with these. Uh, this is from La Crosse, Wisconsin. It's a beer bottle. A Mikado style liquor flask. That's a uh, circa 1910. Hmm. It's like another beer bottle. The tool top, so this pit has some great age. This was made by the William Franzen. It's on Glassworks in Milwaukee. And there we go, a prescription bottle. No markings on it, but I'd put this at about 1905. Maybe another prescription bottle. Looks like a similar style. Okay, no, this one's got Rex on the bottom. It's a Rex oval. Notice it's lavender, so this must have sat in the sun for a while before being thrown down. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, too bad these weren't embossed. Another Rex Oval. Uh, this style hardly ever has embossing on it. Still has the cork in it though. That's kind of cool. Let me 
we have here Alfred Meekin LTD England. So this is the base off of a water pitcher, I believe. Must have broken, so they discarded it. This pit is absolutely loaded. Their bottles stacked. What's going on here? Looks like a yeah, little applied top wine bottle. It's a turn mold piece. And a tooled top beer made by the American Bottle Company. Still has some groundwater in it. It's like a Crown Oval style prescription bottle with the cork in it. And another, it's a circa 1905. Another uh, Rex Oval. These are really faintly embossed on the bottom. That's unusual. And that's what I was working around. It's a very ornate uh, kind of hand lamp or a pedestal type lamp. It's pressed glass, I believe. Looks like a lot of stuff was damaged when I threw it down the pit. This is a Usona, Usona oval style prescription bottle. You notice it has the increments on the side. I don't think they started doing that until 1908 or 1912, right around there. Omimi, North Dakota. This could really be good. It looks like a prescription bottle, kind of wedged in. Got to be very careful here. These things are exceedingly rare. I think it's intact. This thing is intact. A.A. A. Kurtz, druggist, Omimi, North Dakota. This is a holy grail. There's only a handful of these known and it's a ghost town drugstore bottle. This is an incredible find. And another one, oh wait. W. Master and Company Druggist, Willow City, North Dakota. I don't know if I've ever even heard of this or a bottle from that town. That's wild. <laughs> this thing's like 1908 to 1916. It's over 100 years old. A little liquor flask. I think that's a... Mikado style. You know what? Do I feel some embossing on the bottom? Paul Jones. That's a fairly common one. I've found a good few of these around uh, the Dakotas. Still no end in sight. Still a seed layer. You'll see that color change in the soil. I think we're digging up an old outhouse pit. Looks like a Another liquor flask would have held whiskey or brandy. I still got some groundwater in this one. Another Rex Oval prescription bottle. Huh. And another. Got some better embossing on the bottom of this one. Huh. And 
another liquor flask. Yeah, it's got the matching stopper in there. It was so cool. It's still a solid use layer. Some more prescription bottles. Hopefully we can get another embossed one. Yeah, no glass company marks on this. It's a crown oval, could be a Dakota oval. They were similar, similar shapes. And another. Huh. Yeah, no embossing on this one either. Yeah, this is an unusual flask. It has a Mikado shape, but it has the band around the neck like an eagle flask. It could be from a different glass company that I'm familiar with. Might be a couple more down here. That's a tall one. Looks like a Mikado style of some sort. The glass is in beautiful shape. A bunch of broken beers. I have to work around this. Look at all of them. There's a whole one. Let's see. Another uh, AB company. It's got a one on the bottom that could mean 1911. It's a tooled top though. It's from that era. Oh wow. I've never seen a jelly jar like this before. It's got a really odd shape. It's got some cool uh, pattern along the bottom too. I think that's pressed glass. Still a solid use layer. All kinds of stuff in here. Another prescription bottle. Uh, and another Rex Oval. Huh. Little uh I think it's a machine-made homeopathic vial. These had really tiny pills in them. Looks like they're all gone, but the cork's still in it. And another crown oval uh, tooled top, circa 1905. See oh Mimi, we might have another prescription. Got to be careful, these are all kind of wedged in together here. All right, here's a blank Rex Oval. That's a big one, I think that's a 12, you know, actually I think that's a 16 ounce. It's intact. A. A. Kurtz, Druggist, Omimi, North Dakota. Now it has WBM Company on the bottom. That's the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. So this was made in Chicago, likely shipped out here by rail. And a Rex Oval. Yeah, so this is 1905-1910. Huh. Oh, that's a really nice color. AB Company 3. So, uh, the American Bottle Company. And a tooled top. 
We are made by the William Franzen and Sunglass Company of Milwaukee. I don't think I've found the wall of this thing yet either. It seems like the pit keeps going. Another Rex Oval prescription bottle uh, at circa 1905. This pit just keeps dropping. I've been finding all kinds of these pharmacy bottles. It makes me wonder if maybe this pit was related to a drugstore. And another Rex Oval. A new Crown Oval with really clean glass. earlier prescription type bottle. You can see it would have had a paper label in that plate on it. It's a little earlier than the ones we've dug. Look at all these prescription bottles. And this is the business district, so could very well have been the drugstore. Yep, another Rex Oval. You can just hear the bottles uh, grinding together down there. Another Rex Oval. Whoa! Look at that pattern. <laughs> That's something else. That's some kind of transferware, English transferware tra chamber pot, I believe. It's got some really nice design on it. That's really something. And another prescription bottle. Another Rex Oval filled with groundwater. And another. This keeps dropping. This is wild. We've got a big one here. Look at that. Yeah, 16 ounce Rex Oval. Too bad this wasn't embossed from a local drugstore. And another. These all had paper labels. I suppose they could have been used by the local drugstore. He just didn't have the names blown into the glass. That's really something. Looks like some more transferware. What kind of name do we got on this? The Sebring Porcelain. I think that was the Sebring Pottery Company. It was an American company. It looks like some kind of platter of some sort. That blue is incredible. We still haven't found the bottom. And it's just solid bottles down here. There's another one. Looks like uh, mainly some liquor flasks. Ah, that has somewhat of a paper label left on it, but it's too far gone to read. And another, with these uh, paper labels intact, it makes me think the pit could have filled up quick, could have been an active business. <laughs> another Rex Oval. And another liquor flask. It amazes me how many liquor flasks I find in these Pioneer Arrow pits. This is an Eagle style. Yeah. 
another eagle flask. And another Rex Oval. Seems uh, some standard bottles around this town. A big one. I don't want to risk shipping something else. And another one. Look at that. Yeah. Another Rex Oval, 16 ounce. That's a lot of drug bottles. just stacked down here. Wow, so that's another one of those uh, earlier ones that would have had a paper label. I'm thinking this is getting closer to 1900, 1905. And another, yeah, no glass manufacturing marks on them. This has a sharper lip on it. I don't think we've dug one quite in this style. Looks similar to the other ones. It's still a prescription bottle. I found bottom. I think I found the sides, but there's still a ton left in here. Some really hard packed ground too. A bunch of broken windows. Oval. Oh well, wow. okay, a Philadelphia oval style. So that's definitely closer to 1900 there. And another Rex Oval. Huh. I wish some of these earlier ones would have had embossing on them. Yeah, no uh, druggist marks on this one. Wow, so... Another Rex Oval. These folks were definitely suffering from some sort of me uh, medical condition. And another. That's something else. And you can see there's the bottom and the walls. This is the corner. Let's see here. Yeah, these folks definitely had some kind of medical issue. 16 ounce Rex Oval. And the little uh, Mikado style flask. I don't think I've ever seen these things embossed. And another prescription bottle. Uh, not entirely sure of the style of this one. There's no markings on it. More pieces to that chamber pot. Another Rex Oval. This is a big pit. Could have been a commercial type pit as well. Looks like more prescription bottles. Huh. Yeah, another one of those earlier looking things with the paper label. Uh, 
Let's see here. So this is a different kind of bottle. You know, uh, there's no markings on it. It's an oval shape. Not sure if I've seen one quite like it before. Look at all these. Another blank Rex oval. And another, this might be a new record we're setting here. Oh wow, I know from experience, this stuff reeks. I can smell it already. Uh, I'll just get it out of the hole. I usually throw those ones back. Unusual flask. Uh, must be from a glass company. I haven't checked the catalogs from. That's a really strange style. Another Rex Oval. And another, you can see the undigested seeds on this. This is definitely an old outhouse fit. And another. Another one of those earlier things with the slot for the paper label. It's like a beer and a medicine. And another medicine. No embossing on this. It's a, another one with a little different style to it. go. Another Rex Oval. I heard some more bottles grinding in there. It's a unembossed tooled top beer. I hope it's a blank Rex Oval. Yeah, there we go. Uh, probably a new record for these things. Another Rex Oval. it's done. Here's the hull. I'm still undecided as to what the purpose of this pit was. It was an outhouse, but it kind of had a residential vibe to it, also a commercial with the size of it. There's no doubt some folks with medical conditions in the area. We got 76 bottles and most of them are prescriptions. So we got some beer bottles, a couple of wines, an English ale, liquor flasks and the rest are all prescription bottles so everything here dated back from about 1900 to 1910 there you have it we'll get this thing filled back in <laughs>